What's up? Don't need to adjust anything. If you're watching it, if you're listening, you're at the right podcast. This is the DRF Players Podcast. You know Mike Hogan at DRF Formulator. Peter Thomas Fornital is in transit right now. He Where, where he, in the world is Carmen San Diego? That's kind of what Fornital has turned into. Um, I think he may actually be on the ground in the UK right now. He's over there now? That's another so. story. I'm sure if, you know if you guys have touched on what that situation yes, is. Yes, a little bit. A little bit. Um, I'm Matt Bernier. It's been a long time. <laughs> Some of you, if you've listened to it before, you've heard me before. If you're new to it, I used to be on all the time. But then Saratoga and Delmar and Chaos started. But we're back now. Things have settled down. Good to have down. you back. Yeah, it's, it's been back. a while, but we're back. So I'm it's the uh, DRF Players Podcast. I'm happily not hosting. Things, well, you know. <laughs> look, you're going to have to do it again at some I know, point. Don't I think know. that you're off the hook. But <laughs> I don't mind it, but I'm glad not to. So we're back. We're back. It's only the two of us, but that's fine. We'll kind of chop, okay. chop it up a little bit. Um, obviously, there was some racing this past weekend, but it wasn't, I mean, look. Yeah. Kentucky Downs is going on. That's yeah. good. The Woodbine yeah. races, those yeah. were big. The Woodbine Mile, we'll yeah, touch on that. There was the a Iroquois bit. and there was the Pocahontas. You know, maybe we'll see some of those horses in the Breeders' Cup, but nothing really to stop the presses. Since right. we haven't had you for so long, I want to talk Saratoga. And yeah, Walmart. and I think that's a good way for me. And I also apologize if I sound a little nasally, a little congested. It's that time of year, boys and girls. You got the lozenges on, I got the, on the table. Not going to yeah. name brand. Yep. No. Rhymes with balls. <laughs> Anyway, so as long as it doesn't rhyme with B cola. Well, that, I was going to say then. I like that. Three. Right. Um, yeah, I think that would be an easy way to kind of get back into the swing of things. Where I haven't talked to you guys. I've seen Pete. I've seen you yep. separately. Yep. And I still won't be able sure. to talk to you all amongst at the same time. But uh, I saw Pete up at Saratoga. I've seen mm-hmm. you here in the office. Mm-hmm. We've talked about things individually, but not necessarily. As a whole, kind of a recap. And we'll hopefully get Pete. I don't know if we'll get him on this Friday, but hopefully next week we'll get Pete on remote. Once That's he gets the goal. Yeah, once he gets settled, settled down, once there. he figures out the technology, once he figures out his schedule and routine. I would like. I would Pete. like his first time back to have like a top hat and tails. Oh yeah, just sure. to go full proper. Sure. Or that that crazy guy, you know, that's... Uh, oh, um, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name. Yeah, I can't okay. either, but, but you know who I'm talking about. about. Yeah, <laughs> if, if he starts... Then he also has no chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. Well, that's all right. Um, yeah, so where should we start? Obviously, we're not going to go through day by day of no. both meetings, but um, no. I also think this is a good little bit of a time, too, to kind of do this, because this weekend we'll have some... What could be important races mm-hmm. toward the Breeders' Cup, Pennsylvania Derby, Cotillion, a mm-hmm. couple other things, mm-hmm. but... Um, Let's st- I, you know, I'll let you kind of well, d- decide where you want to go with it. Yeah, and, you know, obviously... You've been hosting this <laughs> thing for, for eight weeks now. Fire away, man. Uh, you've obviously been following along the racing with the racing, even though you haven't been on the podcast. Yeah. And, and we've talked about it a little bit off air, but I haven't had a chance to really sit down and pick your brain about mm-hmm. what you thought and what you saw over the summer. I mean, so uh, Del Mar, Saratoga... What was your takeaway from the summer? What was the most impressive performance you saw this summer? The most impressive, we can go both places. We'll go yeah, Del Mar yeah, and Saratoga. split it up however you want. The most impressive at Saratoga, uh, boy, it's a tie between Run Happy yep. and the King's Bishop, which yep. was freakish. Yep. And it still bothers me. We'll talk about him in a minute. Yeah. Uh, and Flincher. Mm-hmm. I thought Flincher's mm-hmm. race was really, so, but I shouldn't have been surprised by that. Right. No. Because I've come on here multiple times. I've gone on Twitter, and, and I, they're good horses in Europe. They just are that much better than yeah, what we have here. Sure. And I mean, I guess that kind of goes back to you know, do we think all of a sudden the Red Rifle is Red Rifle the best turf horse we have? <laughs> he could be. He might be. And that, the, but that that's an indictment as a whole because Todd didn't know what to do with that. It. Was an incredible race. That might have been oh, the yeah. best race Red Rifle can Ever. possibly run. And if you're the owners, you've got to be livid. <laughs> That of all that days, that thing shows of up. all days, that thing shows up and you lose by three, you got pounded. Right. right. Um, he came home in the same time as Flincher. I mean, they yeah. were running. He ran a really yeah. good race. He's a really nice horse. The problem is, you know, uh, we'll see what happens with Flincher. They're still targeting the arc, and yeah. it's a quick turnaround for him to come back over here. Yeah, some have done it. Some have done it. He, he did it last year. Right. Um, he didn't do it successfully. He didn't last do it successfully. Year, but but um, so it wouldn't be unheard of if he did it. But. Um, yeah, I thought those two at Saratoga, anyway, mm-hmm. were the most impressive. As far as Del Mar is concerned, um, boy, it's hard it's, right. it's hard to go right. anywhere other than Beholder. Sure, of course, um, visually at least. And she came very close to the track record, too. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, too. I think Del Mar as a whole, I don't know how much you guys touched on it, but the new surface, it's so difficult to compare things. Right. You know, I've gone through and, and I'm trying to compare certain things that I'm doing on my own. Right. 
comparing the Del Mar dirt to the Santa Anita dirt because you can't compare the Del Mar meeting from last year or years prior to right. this year because obviously it's a different surface. So. And supposedly the dirt has come from the same source. It's, so Yeah, and that's when we would do our Del Mar reports with Brad Free, that was kind of the overriding thing that, generally speaking, the three tracks that they were using in Southern California are supposed to be basically made up the same way. Right. There's going to be little nuances here and there. Right. But they're essentially Los Sal, Santa mm -hmm. Anita, and Del Mar. They're supposed to be based on the same stuff. Um, the Del Mar track, I thought the most intriguing thing was how we saw it change during sure. the course of the meeting. Sure. Now, obviously, the beginning was, uh, I don't want to say marred, but who the hell thinks that there's going to be a rainstorm at the beginning <laughs> of, the, of the meeting in San Diego, that we have right. yielding turf, we right. have you know sloppy and sealed right. and all this stuff? Right. I think it took a little while for them to kind of get it the way they wanted it. Well, and the other thing to keep in mind with the Del Mar surface compared to Los Al, certainly, or, or Santa Anita, is how close it is to the, the ocean. You You're know? right there. If you've never You're been right to Del Mar, there. you are right on the ocean. Stone's throw. Yeah, literally. Yeah. I mean, I, probably a good driver. Yeah. Off yeah. the tee. Sure. Depends how good you are. <laughs> Um, yeah, you're right there, and I think, like you say, that's a good point to bring up. And that's the other thing, too, that we've got to keep in mind. You know, once Hollywood Park closed, Santa Anita picked up the majority of those dates. Mm -hmm. If you've never been to Santa Anita, there's a great difference between Santa Anita when they'll open up in December, going right. into New Year, compared to right. June. Right. It's miserably hot mm -hmm. in June, like mm -hmm. it, 95 right. and, and nasty. Nestled up against the mountain there. Yeah, yeah. It, it gets really yeah. hot. So right. there's, that surface has no choice but to be <clears throat> right. like pavement. Right. You, you, don't, get, you don't get the, uh, the ocean breeze no. out, uh, in Arcadia. Right, and that's the thing. I mean, like you say, Del Mar, you've got the, the, the added sort of benefit of having, you know, you'll have the burn off early on because mm -hmm. you're being so close to the ocean. Mm -hmm. But as the day goes on, generally, it's not going to be overly hot. Well, there, were, there was a, a week where they got a, a pretty good right. hot spell where it was in the 90s. But, I mean, uh, generally, you're looking about 80, right. 82. It's right. not going to be anything ridiculous. So. Right. And, and you, you know, like you said, it's so close to the ocean that, that there are some people that think, and there might be something to it, that the track can change based on the tides based on throughout the, tides. the day. Yeah, and I know that was a big thing. You know, last year and in years prior with the poly track, a lot of people thought at the beginning of the day, it, the track would change drastically as opposed to a, a traditional sort of dirt track mm -hmm. that, you know, as the day got hotter and warmer, as the burnoff kind of burned off, mm -hmm. the track would get much stickier and it was much more difficult for certain horses to do certain things. Well, now it's just a whole new ball of wax, you know, with the dirt track. But like, no pun intended. No pun intended. But like you say, I mean, some people do take that kind of thing into consideration, mm -hmm. the tides changing mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, as far as performances... Those are the three that mm -hmm. kind of stand out to me. Fair, fair. And uh, I wouldn't argue with any of those three, um, especially from a stakes standpoint. Now, let's, let's go maybe a little more under the radar as far okay. as not, like, what was the biggest surprise or what was the sort of the takeaway or is there a horse at either track that you saw and made you think, wow, that's one I want to follow or that's one that I think can be a really good one? Um, well, and I suppose I could kind of piggyback onto the couple of, you know, the, the wild performances. I still think when we see him again, Rockfall in the Vanderbilt was, considering the, the position that Javier had him in, may not have been ideal. Mm -hmm. And he showed a new dimension that, you know what, when this horse is right, he's a monster. Now, you can make the argument that had Johnny V not dropped the stick on the Big Beast, the Big Beast wins that day. Mm -hmm. Um I guess the bigger takeaway is of that sprint division. When we were when we spoke before mm -hmm. the meeting started, I felt like we were kind of, eh, yeah, you know, there's nothing there right. other than private zone. Right now, post meeting and on the west coast, masochistic, masochistic yeah. post meeting now. Right, I think we can go a couple of different mm -hmm. ways. We have, although it may not be his ideal distance, we have appealing tail sure. on the west coast. Yep. Who it'll be interesting to see where he actually ends up going. Is mm -hmm. it the dirt mile? Is mm -hmm. it the sprint? Is it whatever it may be? Mm -hmm. Rockfall. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any any question that he's no. a, a he's... top notch sprinter. Yep. Absolutely. The big beast mm -hmm. is a top notch sprinter, mm -hmm. and we saw what Private Zone's capable right. of doing. And now you have the three year olds. Right. With Run Happy, right. and, it, and maybe if you really want to go in with the Ben Colbert horse, he'll be running this weekend at Parks. Okay. Um, um, 
Yeah. And, and that's not even to mention the champion who is starting to get good again. Starting to. You know, he's going to be a bit of a price again, but, you know, hey. I guess that's the other thing, too. I think it'll depend on, and the reason, you know, the big beast was no match for private zone. Right. In the uh, foreground thing. Right. Yeah. But at this point, my, my brain is just mush. But private zone, private zone was uncontested. And that the other thing, too, I think that could end up, you know, we could turn the tables is the sprint at Keeneland. It's the same as it's sent at six furlongs. Six is a little sharp for private six zone. Six might be sharp for private zone, where I think it's the big beast bit. that's right up his yep. alley. Yep. Rockfall, obviously, yep. not only can he handle six, but he likes Keeneland. He had yep. that big, huge, right. that was sort of his, right. you know, coming, coming of. Yeah, coming you know, out party. Yeah, yep. exactly. That was during the, the spring meeting. So. I think there's a lot of interesting things going forward as far as that sort of division is concerned. The Phillies and Mares, different story. Yeah. I, I boy, I don't really. I like Unbridled Forever. Yeah. Six, I think, is sharp. Yeah. I think seven is ideal or even a one turn mile. Other than that, right. what do you have? I mean, I, Judy the Beauty, I think it's over. Um, the West Coast, there was really not a ton. I, I, I mean, do like Taurus. Sure. I thought her comeback sure. was good, and yep. I know Brad Free and Dan Ilman, they kind of threw a little, not throwing cold water on it, but saying she's going to be, she's going to need to be much better if she's going to win the Breeders' Cup. Um, Fair. Fair. We'll see. I don't know. I just think that, you know, of the toes, two sprint divisions where both of them looked like they were just, you know, barren wastelands, all of a sudden the male side of it seems to be a little yeah. bit more intriguing. Yeah, on, on the East Coast, I think there's a lot of question marks with the Phillies, the sprint Phillies. <coughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, Lav or Dodd. Yeah, where? are we going to see her again? Yeah. Um, you know, you, like you said, Judy the Beauty. We might not see her again. Maybe, maybe do we look at the three-year-old? Do we Perhaps. look at cavorting? Cavorting, maybe, you know. maybe even one of those ridiculous speed balls like super sacks or something like that. At I least can know. muddle the pace. Sure. I don't think she's. I don't know if she's good enough to win, but but she'll be a factor she'll be anyway. A factor, yeah, you know? yeah, because she can alter the way that the race is run. So. Right. Um, yeah, and you know, we, it's amazing that we've gone this far and we haven't even discussed the Pharaoh. We haven't discussed the Pharaoh. Well, let's let's. I'll let you go on though. Let's uh, before we get to the Pharaoh, <coughs> because I think we're going to spend a little time there. Let's talk babies. Mm. What about the babies? What did you see at, at Del Mar and Saratoga? <laughs> the babies, boy. I'm going to try and be kind. Uh, the males in New York are awful. Well, I think we've sh- we've seen that already. That the Del Mar ones, and, and the second string, the second string Del Mar yeah. can beat the first string yeah. New York. Babies. Um, I, I well, think the males. Right. But is there a possibility that the ones we've seen so far maybe were not fully cranked and maybe didn't, weren't well meant to win first or even second out? Because there's a little bit of a, our buddy Pete, mm. wish he was here to talk about it. He really loved Sail Ahoy, really loved Sail Ahoy's debut. Mm. At Saratoga, and of course, debuting for Shug at Saratoga is one for 49 sure. in the last five years. The only win was Honor Code, so, you know, right there. If you run big, debut at Spa. Yeah. You know, Orb didn't win sure. first out. But, yeah. Mr. Speaker didn't win first out. Good horses, but he doesn't necessarily want them. It's okay if they do, but he's not. not, that's the, not, that's not the goal. He's not Todd Pletcher. Right. Um, so is it possible that there's some of those, that maybe the ones that won are not going to step up and win oh. stakes, but but maybe were there some under-the-radar under, under the radar, any under-the-radar performances I mean, you saw? I mean, I didn't think as... Look, there was nothing offhand that, it, you know... Jumping was, out at Yeah, you. that was, like, sticking in my head. But you bring up a good point. I mean, a lot of these horses, whether it's the trainer, who, the, you know, trainer intent, you know, whether it is a show right. or a Bill Mott or anyone like that, right. generally they're not cranked ready to go. Right. Uh, you've also got to factor in some of these trainers that are debuting these horses on grass because they want to get a route race into them. Absolutely. Some of them will do better as distances get longer. Yeah. So uh, all I'm saying is just thus far, as far as the stakes sort of side of things is concerned and precocity and, right. you know, what. right now the New York horse is pale in comparison to the California ones. And even saying that, the California ones, Nyquist is nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Morazic is nice. It's a shame about young Brian. I was going to say, because he could have been anything. Yeah, right. um, but even having said that, thus far, and this will be the real interesting thing, I, I want to see two turns. Sure. Absolutely. Or, or and, and maybe not even two turns, because we won't see it at Belmont, but give me give me a route. Give me a, give me a mile. Which, which gets us to some, one of the races from over the weekend. Did you have a chance to watch the Iroquois? I did not. 
Uh, Cocked and Loaded, I think, is a legitimate horse. And he is a New York sort. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Debuted at Keeneland, yeah. run in New York, uh, actually was coming off of a you know somewhat subpar effort going into the Iroquois. But uh, you should watch it. He, he moved early into a fast pace and um, won impressively going, first time going two turns. The only thing, too, now for me at this point is more of like a... Uh, a bad, I don't want to call it a habit, but a, a bad sort of, I have it set in my head, very similarly to certain people that, you know, they'll look at the Wood Memorial and say, well, I don't want any horses going out of the wood just because right. its track record hasn't been very good. Sure. Which I don't subscribe to. Right. Um, I, I do the same thing with the Iroquois, Iroquois. And, and the Pocahontas, and the Pocahontas sure. where it just seems like the horses coming out of these right. two-turn races at Churchill right. recently as two-year-olds. They don't seem to bring it back. Right, because it's the it's essentially the first two turn stakes of the year. Exactly. So, so you're not necessarily getting the best horses, you're getting the ones that maybe are ready to run those races on those days. Right. And do you know offhand what they got for numbers? I don't. I mean I can't imagine we're talking anything maybe an eighty. Eighties. I mean, I you know. Low 80s. It'll be interesting to see. And you know what? Who knows? What's to say, you know, we've seen multiple times where we will either have a second-time starter go to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile mm -hmm. or, sure, heck, even a, a first-time yeah. kind of thing rolling out for in a, in a stakes race. Uh, maybe we haven't seen, you it's know, entirely someone yet. possible. I guess just overall, especially for, you know, that sort of being Saratoga's calling card, Right. I was very disappointed with the males. It was a little underwhelming. The females, I think there were a couple of good ones. Yeah, and Rachel's and, baby. And Rachel's baby, Rachel's Valentina, I, I think she's legitimately good. Yes. Um, I don't know. Rachel's other baby was good, too. We'll, we'll talk about older. it. We'll talk about him uh, in a minute. But I, as far as Rachel's two-year-old is concerned, uh, yeah, I mean, look, she's she hasn't done anything wrong thus mm -hmm. far. She's by Todd. Or she's not by Todd, but she's with Todd. Right. She's by Bernardini. Mm -hmm. um, is she by Bernardini? Or is the other one? Uh, she might be Curlin. No, the other one's the curling. Jess's dream Jess's is dream's curling. Okay. This one's You're by right. Bernardini. Yeah, so Bernardini. you would imagine distance is going to be his friend, or her friend rather. Than, yeah. You know, distance right. shouldn't be an issue. Um, no problem. No I problem. chose uh, Tap to it okay. uh, in that race. That's I, I the other she, likely. I thought yeah. she ran fine. The problem yeah. for her is she, she really lacks any sort of early kick right mm -hmm. now. Now, maybe going two turns, that'll help her a little bit. Um, I, I thought she was a little bit more professional this time around, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to hold... That really against her. I think there's a couple other decent ones. Tanasa. I ran into a couple mm -hmm. people that are partners with the whole Starlight operation, and you know, I said one. You know, they asked to go. So you didn't pick our horse? I go, no, no, I didn't. I, mean, I, I just didn't like the way it set up for her today. <laughs> I didn't understand the blinkers off move. Yeah, right. And I said, I don't think you have a router. I think you. There's no reason to say though that this horse is a three-year-old. She couldn't win a race like the Victory Ride, mm -hmm. like a Grade Three mm -hmm. at Belmont, mm -hmm. or even if you want to just think bigger, think of the eight bells. Like you don't have to. Right. Th just because you don't have necessarily a, a typical route, you know, an Oaks yeah. contender, doesn't mean you can't have a good, right. good horse. You've got the For test. Sure. You've got all sorts of different races. Well, so. and, and obviously, there, I mean, I don't know anything about the horse, but <clears throat> seeing what she did acting up prior to that first race, which was, was the Astoria, yeah. um, she's maybe got so, she's a little, little crazy. Well, I mean, and let's, you know, it, it, these two-year-olds are still figuring out what's going yeah. on. I mean, there's yeah. a big difference between working out in the mornings. Oh, oh crap. What's yeah. going on well, here? Yeah. One, why are there so many people <laughs> looking at me? Why are we going into the gate with seven or eight other ones? And, you know. Yeah. It, what do I do it, now? Yeah, now what? Um, there's a lot of things that are just kind of different for these two-year-olds. That's why it's interesting when you do see those ones that go out there and they're just as professional as can be. That's right. when you start to think, all right, well. Right. Let's see if you can, can you transfer your professionalism out there right. onto the track, and, and, and can you improve on that? Right, because that's one of the things that's nice with these kind of crazy ones. Once they get it together, sure. Sometimes that step forward. Really absolutely, comes. absolutely. So it'll be interesting to see. Maybe someone will pop up. Um, I do have to say, I love Hollendorfer's filly. Yeah, I think yeah. she right now. If I had to make a pick for the juvenile fillies, yeah, it would probably be Songbird. Yeah. I don't know that they're going to... I assume that's what the ultimate goal will be. They'll probably run sure. the chandelier. Sure. And then if she does well there, they'll send her to Keeneland. But, um, boy, I, everything about her. She's by Medaglia Doro, I believe. And when just when she won her, her debut, she just looks different. Mm -hmm. She's that mm -hmm. sort that maybe she... Is, I don't even necessarily mean size-wise, but she just... She just Air. looks... Well, she, but she just looks like... 
a professional racehorse already, and that was her debut. And then when she came back and pounded those in the uh, in the debutante, I just think she's really good. Right. And yeah. I think distance is going to be her friend. No, no argument there. I I, I agree. Um, all right, let's uh, real quick. You mentioned we mentioned him. Uh, what did you think of Jess's dream? Well, boy, I thought he was going to be East. <laughs> yeah, I honestly thought. I, know. I, I thought a couple of things. Kieran, he's obviously had some issues. Sure. I mean, you don't. The right. goal is not to debut right. as a three-year-old at Saratoga. Right. right. Debuting at nine furlongs, I thought was Kieran. Kieran had never done it before. I thought it was very, very odd. Never, never very done odd. It before. And it made me initially think this is just going to be a learning experience. Yeah. And in a way, it kind of was. Sure. But then he looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about honor code. Right. I'm not comparing the two of them. <laughs> but running style-wise. Yes. Now, it's too early to really say what this horse's running style right. is. Right, exactly. Because he was probably was still just yes. thinking, what are we doing here? And he was green. He, he was, was green, Oh, absolutely. Green as, as the grass. But, boy, when, when he turned. Right. The one thing I, I noted when I was watching the race and watched the replay again. He can run on dirt, clearly. I got a 90-plus buyer, something like that, yeah. 90, 91. His action, to me, I still think he may end up being turf force in the long run. It's possible. But that's not to say, look, if he continues to do this on the dirt, or is this just the, you know, the tip of the iceberg, then right. who knows? Um, I do love that Kieran is saying baby steps. Right. We're going to go to an allowance. Right. You know, we're going to go just one thing at a time. Don't throw him into the deep end. Right. He still has to learn a lot. He has ability. And thus far, it's a shame that we'll probably only see two babies from Rachel. Yeah. Because it looks like right. she could end up being, you right. know, she's already got a grade one winner. She, she's two for two as a producer. She has a grade one winner in three starts. Yeah. I right. mean, she's, her, her, her she's offspring three are three for three. They're yeah. undefeated. So right. um, it's a shame that, you know, it doesn't look like we're going to have any more babies by her, but. Yeah, you, um, know, you never know. You never She's know. Still youngish. You never know. Maybe but they, I mean, it's, it certainly sounds like Stone Street is saying that. she owes us nothing at this point. Right. We're not going to do that. Right. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he continues on with. I mean, if you really wanted to get aggressive, let's say you can get a race into him here at Belmont, and he does well. Maybe a race like the Discovery at Aqueduct. Yeah. You know, a Grade Two or a Grade Three when all the big horses or the big three-year-olds are gone. Right. You know, you can kind of ease him in there. Um, and, and boy, let's say if he if you continue on that path, why not put him away, and then bring him back to Gulfstream and think yeah. a race like the Don or yeah. something like that. Well, you know? I, so I was gonna. Add, I know that they're going conservative, mm. uh, and that's good. I mean, obviously they don't want to mess with uh, a horse who probably, like you said, has had some issues in getting to the races sure. to begin with. But let's say, let's just for the sake of argument, mm. to say. They maybe said, okay, that was amazing, he's doing great. Maybe it's different connections that are, 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 are more prone to taking shots. And let's say he showed up on Saturday in the Penn Derby. Okay. Would you give him a shot? Um, no. Not necessarily, okay. And, and, and maybe, maybe that's not the best example because that track doesn't tend to play as favorably to stone closers like he showed he was in his first start. But, uh, like the West Virginia Derby type field, or yeah. or something like that, <clears throat> like a like a grade two, grade three in the second start. I, I guess for me, I still like the idea of give him, let him figure it out a little bit. You know, let's yeah. not. You know, that was my concern. Uh, Michael Stidham has a filly named Zapessa, mm-hmm. who they. Basically, he didn't necessarily want to. It certainly sounds like it was an owner's call right. to run her in the, in the Del Mar Oaks. Right. I think she has a world of ability. You just you wonder if that ultimately getting just trounced, right. does that sour a horse? Right. And when you've got one that looks like they have some ability, I would rather not go full kid gloves, mm-hmm. but say let's just one thing at a time. We don't need to dive Stair into steps. the deep end. Yeah, yeah. let's... Let's get the swimmies on your arms and then throw you into the pool. Right. Let's not just throw you into the deep end when you don't really know how to swim yet. Right. You got ability, right. but let's kind of make sure that you know what's going on. So I wouldn't like him in a sort of spot like that. I, I Right now at this point, I would like to go on, like you say, let's get through your next condition. Mm-hmm. And if you pass that with flying colors, ideally I'd like to see a little bit more into the race early on than you know having to make that big, bold move. But... 
then I would think a race like the Discovery or something right. like that that may be a little bit under the radar. Right. That not everyone is focused on because that, that's close right around Breeders' Cup time. Right. And then if you even if you run well in that, that's right. when you start thinking, okay, let's think about you know a race like the Don, or let's think about a race like uh, and Kieran doesn't really ship to California, but a race like <coughs> the Big Cap or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't send. I wouldn't do anything crazy. I send them to Dubai, but I mean, right. you know, well, we got plenty of options around here. It, it's almost a shame, in a sense, of the time of the year that there are very few options for just three-year-olds anymore, because that would be a good shot for a horse like that to get their first test of or a taste of stakes company. Well, and that's why I, I, I really, I, I mean, who knows? We'll see what they want to do. But I would think a race like the Discovery, right, is just the perfect, right. Like, th- that would be the immediate target, the immediate right. goal. Because right. you get a mile and an eighth, right. you get three-year-olds, you're probably not getting the best three-year-olds. Right. Uh, I think Protonico won it last year. Yes, correct. And you know what? Say, and if you really wanted to get ambitious, if he runs well there, you know, uh, timing-wise, you could still do the Clark if you mm-hmm. really wanted to. Mm-hmm. I don't think they would. Right. But, again, I, I'm just yeah. kind of... Then you send him to Florida. Yeah, send him to Florida, yeah. and, you, and you plot out something to get him in, you know, get him ready for the Don or, or something like that. But I think he's got ability. It's yeah. just we got to figure out if he can get a little bit more into the race earlier than that because I, I we'll talk about Honor Code and, and those horses in, in a bit, but there's still something I'm terrified of, of having a horse that is just so reliant yes. on coming from right. 150 yards out of it. You know? Well, yeah, and hopefully that won't be his running style. You know, just just because he did it in his debut doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be a Zenyatta or an honor code. Right. You know, hopefully he shows a little bit more speed, or is, or is at least a like you said, like lost touch with the field was what I was thinking. He was like, off the, the screen. Yeah. Oh, he was yeah. off the screen. His chiclet was off the screen. Yeah, I, I thought he was eased. Yeah. Right. And I said, oh no, you know, we got uh, it's Zenyatta's just, baby all over again. Well, yeah. yeah. By the way, yeah. I've always I've made it clear I'm a Rachel fan. <laughs> scores 3-0. 3-0. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. All right, well, let's move to the Pharaoh. Okay. We haven't, we've, we've barely even mentioned him. Yeah. He's kind of burying the lead here. What, what, what's your take? What's your take? What's your Overall? take on Travers? Well, we haven't even talked Haskell on the podcast. That's right. We, we haven't. Talk, Jesus. We haven't it's talked. been a long time. Yeah, it so has. I mean, we, like, the last time we talked about him was he just was a fresh Triple Crown winner. Let's go over the Haskell yeah. real quick. I, I don't know what you guys talked about. I thought it was a slam dunk. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to win. Yes. The way he won yes. was scary. Yes. I said it to everyone. I happened to be right on the rail in the winner's circle, and I hadn't been that close to him. I'd, you know, I'd obviously seen him run before in person, but I'd never been that close. And when they came by the first time, he was next to Competitive Edge. Competitive Edge is a nice horse. It looks good, runs, you know. They just look so much different going by. And it had nothing to do physically. It had to do with the stride. It, it seemed like he was barely touching the ground. Mm. And that more or less, he didn't need to take as many. I don't know. There's not a good way for me to explain it. It just didn't look normal. Yeah. And probably because he's not a normal horse. Right. I mean, he's much better than right. than anything. And then whenever, I mean, at least his peers, um, his peers at this point, right? Yeah. And he just, uh, he's just a really, really good, good horse. Yep. And and he does things that are are very, um, boy, whatever sort of hyperbole you want to use. I mean, he's he's the most exciting thing that we've had as far as a national impact in. Uh, you know, Zenyatta, right. I mean, uh, you know, probably even bigger, more so because yeah. of what he did. But um, yeah, the Haskell slam dunk. I thought it was interesting, though. Now, I tried to uh, a keyed. I used him. The pick that I had to put out on TV, I didn't I didn't want to. Right. I mean, everybody was picking Pharaoh. Right. So I tried to just I, I, I borrowed a page from your book and I said, we're going to play Dollar Super. OK, it's going to be Pharaoh. Yep. Upstart. OK. All all. Oh, Hope for bombs. It costs like twelve bucks or twenty twenty dollars, something like that. Upstart needs. I thought he needed the race the way that he he yeah. ran, and he runs yeah. third. No big deal. But Keen Ice makes this big move, and and Illman liked Keen Ice to clunk up and get a piece and run second in that spot. It was up at Saratoga, uh, going. Uh, it was Whitney weekend. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to Travis Stone, track announcer at Churchill, mm-hmm. and he goes, "There was something about 
the fact that Keen Ice was making up ground on him late. And I said, yeah, but, you know, what do you, th I mean, Farrow's geared down. And right. He goes, it's just something, something about that stuck with him. Fast forward four weeks later. Travers. Um, yeah, all right. I mean, where do we begin? The way that the race unfolded? Yeah. Look, uh, I... I'll, go ahead. I'll ask you a question that I asked Pete on the podcast. Is there a different result if Joel doesn't fall off Bourbon Courage? Well, I mean, when you listen to Rosario and you listen to Kieran... Their quotes, I mean, they would lead you to believe that there would have been a, there could have been a different result. I mean, Rosario said he, he probably would have been a few lengths off, and I think Kieran said he wanted Frosted like fifth hmm. during the running. Hmm. Um, I, yeah, and if, and, and if he doesn't light him up like that, I don't think there's any way he gets caught late. Well, and I guess that's the thing, too. And again, it's, it's easy to go back right. and say sure. what, what could have, or, or try yeah. to think of what they wanted or, or whatever. That could. But but no knock on Liscano. He tried to win the race. And, I thought it, Based on, uh, with a horse he's never ridden before, he, he did what he thought he needed to do to win the race. I thought that that was the ride he should have, Frosted should have received in the Belmont. Correct. I would wholeheartedly agree. Because everyone just always, uh, immediately chalks up the fact that this is a horse who does his best running from well off the pace. And I had to keep saying, I go, go back to the races in Florida. Right. He was on the lead. Right. When they put the hood on him, he was right. on, he was forwardly placed. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I thought that he, this is a horse who has more early speed than people have given him credit for. So when right. Lascano went, and let's call it for what it is, I, being totally honest here, I thought he had him beat. I thought Frosted was going oh, yeah. to win. Me too. I Me go, too. Could, I'm standing again, too. I'm on the rail right at the winner's circle. They come by. At the top of the lane, I'm th I, I didn't say it out loud, but I said, oh, my God, yeah. he's got him. Right. He's going to, you know. Yeah. And then whenever Farrell came back on the inside, I said, this, this is a freak. Super horse. You know, really yeah. proper. And then you saw another horse making up ground. And f now you got to keep in mind, I'm in the midst of standing there when they go through three quarters going, what is, what is Texas Red's deal? Yeah. Where are you? What right. what happened? Right. Because, because you're supposed to be with Keen Ice. Right. You're you're supposed to be the one closing late. You're supposed to be going yeah. in tandem with Keen Ice, right. and you're supposed to be better than Keen Ice. Right. You're the one that's supposed to be making this move, and instead, yes. Keen Ice. How good's Javier? I mean, <laughs> Javier is the best. There's no real argument about it. Yeah. I mean, he just he pushes all the right buttons. Right. I, you know, whenever Pharaoh put Frosted away, I thought, wow. And then you see Keen Ice coming. And we've talked about it. I've talked about it with a bunch of people. I'm sure we brought it up on the podcast at some point. It's you, The fact that you can put away one challenger, that's impressive. A good horse. Very rarely. You, you probably can't put away two, it's though. It's very hard. And then somebody came very to me hard. afterward, and they go, do you just think that, you know, Victor and Farrow didn't see him coming? And I go, no, I, I just think he got beat. He I think did. he got beat at he, the very end. He, he got beat. Um, and... I, I'm just still the there, square. there's still a part of me that I'm, I'm thinking. I go, this is the same Keen Ice that I I liked during the, the Triple Crown Trail leading up to it, but I never thought he was a legit. I thought he was a clunk up. He's going right. to run second, third, maybe. I don't. I mean, is he legitimately a, a, a Breeders' Cup Classic contender now? And give credit to Keen Ice. We talked about that a little bit on the podcast with Pete right after. I think he's one that could be a little overlooked and. You know, if he's oh, if, if he's a big price, he is a an improving horse. He's improving at the right time. Sure, he needs help. He needs a pace dynamic. He needs he needs the race to go his own way. But when it does, and often there's a pace in the Breeders' Cup Classic, you know, it's rare that you have something like what happened last year, where a horse wires the field. I and mean, granted, he had a little help from his own. You know, he's sure. his own his own best friend there. Those kinds of horses do rally in the oh, Breeders' yeah. Cup. Simple as that. Absolutely. And that's the thing. You know, I was talking to uh, Wayne here in our office. Mm -hmm. You can follow. I think he's Class Handicapper. Class Handicapper. On Twitter. Very, very good, good one to follow on Twitter. Um, we were going over figs because I've recently yeah. been chopping up some of my own things. And we know Wayne is, Wayne is world famous. Wayne's been famous. doing it for years. Wayne is world famous <laughs> for his mule 
figures. Mule figures. The mule figs. That's how he's gotten rich. I so. hope they never get published. Well, well, for his <laughs> sake. I mean, look, he's sitting on a cash cow. Why would he want to get them published? Right? Um, wait, wait till text. Hey, I got a mule running in, in, in at Ferndale. And then I just love when they hit the wire, they just immediately stop, and you dump the rider every single time. Um, even on my figs. The only horse of the three-year-olds that is, is getting, that just continues to get better bit by bit is Keen Eyes. Mm-hmm. Because I was curious to see, you know, did I think, have any of them necessarily been getting better? Right. And it started with Frosted. Where of my past four races, I've had Frosted as a 38, a 39, a 39, and a 38. He hasn't gotten any faster. Yeah. He's running the same race every time. Pharaoh, basically 41 for the Belmont, mm-hmm. 40 for the Haskell, mm-hmm. 39 for the Travers. Mm-hmm. He's not getting. He hasn't gotten any faster. Sure. Based on my numbers. Anyway. Sure. Now some other people maybe right. maybe he has. Right. The most intriguing thing is again, you know, this is the time of year where we want to see the three year olds right. take a step forward. Right. And not only we want to see it, you're going to have to. Absolutely. And <coughs> I, sh- I should have said, by the way, we're, we're going to go back to it now. The most impressive performance, one of them anyway, I put it in that top two or three, was a losing effort. It was Liam's map. Sure. James Maps Whitney. Sure. I think you could make the case yes. that may have been the best race of the year run by a horse. Yeah. I, I would say it was a much more <coughs> impressive performance than his win in the Woodward. No question. I mean, in the Woodward, he had everything his own way. Yeah. I said it. And to, he was able to slow things down a little more. Yeah. And I mean, I said it to Bob Newmeyer. I said, you know, I mean, if, if Liam's map runs his Whitney back, he wins. Yeah. There, there's no arguing oh, yeah. that. My question was, did he have the ability to do it on three weeks or four mm-hmm. weeks rest? Mm hmm. Sure enough, he did. Right. Um, but that kind of goes back to what you were talking about with Keen Ice. I mean, there was going to be pace in the Breeders' Cup. There is. There's going Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Unless there's a ma- mass defections in right. the next, you know, six weeks. Right. Which, knock on wood, there aren't. Right. You're going to have pace. Right. And, and a lot of people will be thinking the way you were thinking in the Travers, where, okay, if there's pace and you're looking for a closer, Honor Code is the better closer. Honor code is the is the Texas red. Well, sometimes that doesn't always work that way. Right. You know, uh, either based on the way the jockey moves, or you know, sometimes there can be trouble or traffic, or maybe it's just not even the horse's day that day. Yeah. Um, so so that's why I think, you know, look, I'm not saying he's the most likely winner, but he's going to be probably worth playing at whatever price he is. I, I can't envision him being anything less than probably twenty. 25? Oh, no, I think it'll be less than that. Really? I, I was thinking probably between 12 and 15. Yeah, I, just because just because he, especially the Breeders' Cup. Well, let's do it. Let's let's do it. Okay, we got Pharaoh. Yeah, I'll yeah, have got Pharaoh. Honor Code. Yep. We got Beholder, assuming yep. she goes. Yep. We got Tonalist. Yep. We got Wicked Strong. Well, uh, he'll, maybe. he'll be shorter than Wicked Strong if they we got We got Liam's Map. We got, you know, I, I plus, think, plus who, whatever wild cards we might. I, I, would, I would envision that you know. those will be the ones, I mean, if you want to throw even like a Glen Eagles flight, in. Even? Catch a flight, as much as I would love him to go, I don't think he's going to because okay. it sounds like doing Japan, okay. Japan Cup. Right. Um, I, I think you, you hit the five. And opportunities. And, uh, I, I think he would be in the same ballpark as yeah. opportunities. So, uh, I, the biggest question will be if they all go, how short is Pharaoh? Right. Because I don't necessarily think he is the most likely winner. Right. If, if things go, you know, as, as it stands right so now. So of the three that are probably going to be the ones getting most attention in the wagering, Pharaoh, Beholder, Honor Code, who do you think? You, so you think it, Pharaoh will be favored? I think Pharaoh will be the favorite. And I think second choice would be Beholder. Because okay. of the Philly angle. But I think she would probably be co or close with Honor Code. Right. I'm imagining, I don't think we'll have a huge field. I'd imagine you probably have 10, 12, maybe. 12, I would guess. Maybe. Um, Pharaoh, even, four to five. Wow. You think it'd be higher or lower? Do you think he should? One, do you think he should be, or what do you think he will be? Well, I Again, was thinking more like all... eight, eight to five. <coughs> Just first time facing older, and he's facing some horses that keep at, in mind. At least if you believe the buyer figures have run faster than him. Game on, dude! For for two that's years true. in a row was like six to five. Yes, that's true. So uh, that's this true. the only. I mean, I, I really think this horse has been one to five in in right. each of his past right. three starts. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would I would imagine we're looking at even about even money. Okay. A holder, let's say five to two. Okay. 
Hunter Code, probably three to one yeah. in that ballpark. And then I think you do get a bit of a break. A little separation. So it, whether it is a Liam's, Liam's map. map um, total list. I, total list is the wild card to me, just based on price. If I had to pick a horse right now to win, I'd pick Total List. Yeah. Because I still don't think he, he has gotten a, necessarily a fair shake. He is one. Get him into the race earlier mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Hey, he's he was running at the end of the Whitney. Mm-hmm. Sure. Get him into the race a little well, bit earlier. You know, you're you're even going to have horses like Coach Inge, yeah, who, who who could be a player and is Absolutely. probably going to be a decent price. Oh, he'll be a he'll be a big price. He you is know. the one that he'd be in that twenty five range. In FNX, perhaps. I love FNX, yeah. and I don't hold that. I tweeted it afterward. Can't hold the Woodward against him. He was yeah. acting like an idiot before the before so, the race. So I think you could have twelve plus. You know, you get the maybe qu- you would. The question, Glenn Eagles, is he, you know, right. Like, uh, whoever else might show. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it, it is interesting to see, you know, who, if anyone else points for it or anything like that. The other three-year-olds, if any of them show, does Frosted go on with it? Do, you know, yeah. you name right. it. Right. Does Texas Red, it's who awesome. knows what happened, right. does he continue on with it? But, um, you know, because the other thing to think about, or I guess maybe the the good benchmark we could use is, is Keen Ice going to be a shorter price than he was in the Travers? Uh, I'm going to say push. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. say push. That's your over-under. About, about, right. That's your over-under? Then I'll, I'll, over-under. I will go slightly under. Because <laughs> I would say, I, more I think about it, probably 15. Okay. 12 to 15, okay. but I, I would say, yeah, I would yeah. hesitantly take the under. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, all in all, look, uh, I thought Farrow ran a good race. I thought Key Nice, he ran a good race. Credit to the horse. Did you, uh, you probably haven't, because I just mentioned it to you yesterday and you said you hadn't, but have you had a chance to listen to <coughs> the webinar we did last week with Randy Moss on um, Moss Pace figures? No. Do so if you have time, especially the part I tweeted out, a link directly to the portion where he talks about the pace dynamics in the Travers. Mm. Because he came on air, you you might have not have heard because you were busy. In, I had him uh, in my ear. Same. Okay, you heard him. Yeah. So he came on air right after and said, you know, 48 and change, if he was the horse we thought he was, he should have won with that relatively leisurely first half mile. Mm. Um, that was his immediate response, which I'm sure you heard. Yep. After the race, he went back and looked at it. He dug in and realized that that second half mile. Fastest. Fastest, not only in the history of the Travers, but fastest by a second. Yeah. Like, not close. We're talking, like, five lengths? Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they cranked it up. Yes. Yes. That second half. Yes. And even if you compare other famous pace duels in the Travers, yeah. it was a second, more than a second faster than any other Travers in history. And so the fact that he put away Frosted, who, like you said, I thought had him beat. I thought he had him beat. Not only did he come back and put that horse away, but he ran on, and he didn't really get beat much by Keen Ice. No, it was three quarters of a length. Yeah, a length. Three quarters of a length. I mean, it's it, like you say. He ran, and that's the thing. I think too many people get a little bit. You know, Randy even admitted it that in the immediate aftermath. Look, that, that's the difficulty with that whole rapid reaction, the right. rapid response. You right. don't have time to go and look right. and see how things. And Sometimes actually it's not the best it. response. You know, exactly, one hundred percent. And I think that's a case where, like you say, I mean, he went back and looked things up and. I mean, yeah, that was that was a major league effort. Like, yeah. you can't hold anything against the horse. Right. The question now I have is, you know, let's just say hypothetically, he's able to gear it back a little bit. Right. One, right. The question is, where do you go from there? Because because I feel like it was his best race I've seen him run. Oh wow! I would go. I would go even. I would go even that far. Um, In defeat, it may have been well. Very close to his best performance I've seen from him. I thought his Haskell was freakish. His Belmont was very good. His Derby was good. His his Preakness, his Preakness was very good. Yeah. Um, and I thought his Travers was very good. My only concern now becomes, and the reason I picked against him, and I said it to a bunch of other people. I mean, right idea, wrong horse. Yeah. Where I, you know, I I couldn't envision my keen ice. Who was one for ten lifetime? He's the one. He he is the onion to. That's it. that's how he gets through his N1X condition. Yeah, he wins the Travers. He beats the Triple right. Crown. Um, the question now, and it wasn't necessarily because I didn't think Farrow was any good. I mean, I, I said it right on there. I said he he has the tactical advantage. He's the class mm-hmm. of the field. I mean, he right. he has all the advantages. Yeah. I don't need many reasons to bet against a one to five shot. 
and it's Saratoga. Yeah. Weird things happen at Saratoga, right. and then when you factor in, I don't know for sure, but I think a lot of people, you can make that sort of case that Baffert probably didn't really want to run there. Right. If Baffert probably had his druthers, he would be running on Saturday in the Pennsylvania Derby. Which is, which is part of why I say that might have been the most impressive performance I've seen. All those factors. That's fair. That's you fair. Know, yeah. Putting away Frosted the way he did, re-rallying him. You know, not just uh, dueling, you know, being game. You, you rarely see a horse get passed. Sometimes they come back and win by a head or win by a half length. He put him away. He put him away. Open length. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it was like uh, you got. And guess what? I, I love I love Karen. I love the horse Frosted. You got to feel a little bit bad for this thing now. I mean, he's just running. Sure. He continues sure. to run into a monster. Right. Over and over right. and over again. Right. Which is why on Saturday, I mean, all things being equal, that should be his. The concern I have now is uh, maybe it's to to the lemons a little. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a combination of that, and I, I don't know if he's getting any better. That's my biggest thing too now. So going back to Pharaoh real quick. Going toward the Breeders' Cup, I loved the idea of, look, after the Belmont, it was Haskell, mm -hmm. one other prep, whatever it is, probably mm -hmm. P.A. Derp, classic. Yeah. Now, with the way that the Travers is spaced, right. you're it's either going to be squeezing in a prep, nah, they're which training doesn't up. sounds like, yeah. and, and, and eight I don't... Eight-week eight break. Oh, man. Eight-week break. That's a big... Right. I, I, he's a great horse, but boy, that's a lot to ask. Yep. Which, and when we just look at it strictly from a figure standpoint, he is yet to even come close right. to what the the fastest older horses have right. run. Right. I mean, we're talking he's probably a length or two slower than a Beholder, than an Honor Code, right. than a Liam's Map. You know, take that for what it's worth. Right. But uh, right. boy, that to me, as your short priced favorite. Yeah, I I can't be I can't right. back you in right. that spot. Right, I no, that's 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 absolutely fair, uh, absolutely fair, and I'm probably going to be thinking the same way as you. And by the way, it still it bothers me so so much, because I still maintain that the best horse is not going to be able to race in the race because I still think shared belief would yeah. pound yeah. this entire field. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the that's the thing that like that kills me that. Shared belief will be able to come back. Right. It sounds like he'll right. come back as a five-year-old. Right. But and he's a gelding. I mean, we don't have right. to worry about him being whished off to the stud. Right. But oh god, because I know I because I'd actually what a race I'd get it, but I'd get a number. I'd well, actually get too. like and I say a number. I'd get like five to two. Right. He'd be the same price as Honor Code. Well, I think he would. You know, I'm what not going to say what I really think. Be. Well, and that's and, what. And if you had Chrome someone, too. Yeah, someone tweeted that last night. They go, think about it. If you could have had Pharaoh, Chrome, yeah. Beholder, Honor Code, Liam's Map, Shared Belief, Tonal. I mean, you could. Yeah. This could be a, a superstar yeah. sort. And yeah. then if you want to throw in like a total X factor, like a Glen Eagles, right? You know, right. Um, yeah, it, it would have been fun to see. But it's unfortunate and things happen. But um, I, yeah, I, I will stand by that. The, the, the best horse. Still, to me, <laughs> I still think shared belief is well, the best word. It, uh, uh, it's it's an interesting point, and it, I I wish we could have seen them run against each other. Oh because, God, I do too. Uh, you, you you may not be wrong. I I'm not sure I could argue. I, ju I just I, I just say there's no way shared belief would have ever lost the keen eyes. <laughs> keen eyes? <laughs> Come on now. Ouch. Ouch. I'm just saying. I'm just Ouch. saying. That's all. I'm saying. Well. I have no disrespect to Keen Ice or anyone. I would, I, I believe Pete wrote an article where one of uh, the old uh, contest players, I'm, I'm forgetting who it was, so forgive me, uh, compared the Travers um, to, this is a race that was a little before your time, the 1978. A little? A little before your time. <clears throat> 12 years. Ni <laughs> 19 Half my life. 1978 Jockey Club, Gl Jockey Club Gold Cup. Was this the whole... Uh... Was this the Affirm? Affirm Seattle, Seattle Slew, Slew, and then Ex Exceller came up late. Ernie Munich, I saw him on uh, Woodward Day. And yeah. He and uh, Peter Rotundo Sr. were discussing yeah. the whole Have you watched that dynamics. Race? I haven't. You should watch it. I haven't. It. I'll you probably do that when we go back yeah, over there. Yeah, because, because similarly, I think that is, uh, and that's maybe the quintessential example of a horse who maybe ran their best race ever in defeat. Right. You know, a lot of people say Zenyatta's best race came when she lost to Blaine. Sure. Um, just, In that respect, you might be right. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So uh, it, it, I'm, I'm not sure it was quite as incredible a performance as Seattle Slew's jockey called Gold Cup, but, um, but boy, I mean, that, that was a fantastic race. He ran very well. He, he, did, he definitely did. He didn't lose anything no. in my eyes. No, no. Um, it just, it'll be very interesting to see yeah. now, boy. Big ask. <clears throat> Big ask. All right, well, let's transition a little. Let's go back to some of the recent races. Say, cause we got we're running a little we're long. We're running already. a little long. We only have about we have about ten minutes. Ten we minutes. can we can do it in ten minutes. Um, we had uh, we had a th- nice three year old filly, the Sands Point, uh, Sentiero, Love Italia. Love her. Won impressively. You 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 only got eight to five if you backed her, but boy, um, she looked like a winner just about every step of the way. So my question for you. And, and certainly, boy, she, she was a maiden until April 19th of this year. She hadn't even run until March of this year. I think I've, I've picked her. I didn't pick her in the Sands Point because I thought she was going to be too short. Yeah. But I, I honestly legitimately think I've picked her in every other race that she's Well, I, I picked I just, her in the Belmont Oaks. I, and, love, I did, too. Uh, yeah. I, I, I love her. I, boy, if she'd won the Belmont Oaks, it would have been... Um, it would have been, been a, case closed. A, yeah. Um, but I shouldn't say that. We'll, well, we'll get into it. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, I was thinking more personally. It would have been a, a very nice, a very, a very nice result in the. Uh, um, but anyhow, uh, I've got past performances of three, three-year-old turf fillies in front of me. Um, Lady Eli, who of course is undefeated, and has run three times this year: two graded stakes win, including a Grade One win, mm-hmm. three for three. Sentiero Italia, who is four for six with two grade twos Mm. uh, and a loss head-to-head with Lady Lady Eli Uh, and of course she is likely to continue racing and we may very well see her in the Breeders' Cup. Lady Eli a little uncertain about her racing future all signs point to the uh, recovery is going very well but we may or may not ever see her again. I think it's probably a long shot that we'll even see her again this year. Yeah oh oh, yeah yeah. Um, this year period I yeah I I'd be surprised if we saw her. So, so for the Eclipse, her PPs are probably set. So you've got Cintiera Italia's PPs. You've got Lady Eli's PPs. You've got the wild card, Lady Shipman, who broke, she's a monster. broke a track record at Saratoga. Yeah, she's a monster. I mean, it's not like... She's a monster. They haven't been running races at Saratoga very long. <coughs> she, she, she just beat one that was yeah, set a couple years ago. For a while. She set a track record at Saratoga. She is... Seven for eight on the turf this year. Mm. Her only loss came when she went a little further. Well, I don't know. It's be hard to say a little further. A little further than she had run before and has run since. So mm. it's hard to say whether or not she can stretch out. But she is she is a monster, and she beat a really good horse last out in Frias Bird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So right now, if we had to stop, who is you, who, 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 if there was a turf, three-year-old turf filly, Eclipse Award. Who who gets your vote? Of these three? Of those three. Well, or anybody else. I didn't. I, I, Just turf fillies? Three year old turf filly. Um, it would be Lady Eli. Yeah. Um, and body it, of work? Well, not even necessarily body of work. Just the fact that on the square, since here Italia, she continues to get better, and who knows right. what Lady Eli could continue to do. But on the square, she, since here Italia was, no, was not in the same ballpark as right. Lady Eli. Right. And she had no sort of issue or anything. And I just can't possibly... Lady Shipman, I think she's probably going to be your favorite in, in the turf sprint oh, in the yeah. Breeders' Cup. I, I think she's going to be very sure. tough to beat. For sure. I can't envision... No one is going to give her the time of day, right or wrong, but because she's a turf sprinter. No Which one's is a shame. Oh, Which is absolutely. a bit of a shame. Sure, sure, no question. But So it's basically for me, it's a two-horse race. And right now, it's Lady Eli. Um, since here, Italia... I think you'd have to win the Breeders' Cup, Philly and Mare Turf, which I tweeted after. I think she's capable of. Yeah. I really do. I don't know if that's what their plan is, but I think she could. Um, I think she'd have to win, and even then, I don't know if yeah. she would be ahead of Lady Eli. I think the Lady Eli thing, she's going to get... a lot of sentimental. She'll get it on twofold. The sentimental yeah. and... Why? Well, three. Sentimental, obviously, her performances. Sure. And the... I don't want to call it the injustice, but the, the fact that so many people last year thought that she was the best two-year-old, right? But because of the body of work right. thing, that it would, I don't, you know, right. she's not, she hasn't, she hasn't passed away, but like a, like a, you know, sort of, I don't want to call it like it's a career what achievement. Could have been, yeah, yeah, like that. You were right. probably going right. to be it. Right. That being said, they don't have it broken up into turf and dirt for the three-year-old, really. right? Um, 
Yeah, I'm I'm, still, I'm creating a new Eclipse Award just for the sake of the podcast. And that's <laughs> and you know what? I would still today. I still think it's Lady Eli, mm-hmm. three year old filly. Mm-hmm. I think that it very likely begins to change. I have to do the, all the work, but I think it could change on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a world in which, in terms of the real Eclipse voting, there's a world in which Lady Eli, six for six lifetime, with two grade ones, four graded stakes, including a Breeders' Cup, ends up not being an Eclipse Award winner. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think if <clears throat> if Embellish the Lace wins on Saturday, I think all of a sudden she vaults herself to the front of the leaderboard, uh, to the top of the leaderboard, because mm-hmm. this well, will be even, back-to-back grade ones. Um, she would probably get a little bit of look for turf Philly Mare. Uh, yeah, depending on depending what happens. Because, I mean, the older ones, Stephanie's kid. Well, right now, Teppen would probably Teppen, be the one, but, I think. But, but Teppen's, uh, Teppen's been beaten. Teppen's been beaten, but I, again, I think it goes back to they would hold it against her that you know you haven't been out since July and you've only beaten your own, you've only beaten mm-hmm. three-year-old company, mm-hmm. you've only beaten two-year-old mm-hmm. company. Um, Unless there's that lifetime achievement, you know. That's and, the only yeah. thing that right now I would be thinking it could be there. What could have been? Yeah, right. You know. Kind of the same as when Zenyatta won Horse of the Year. Right. Went to the year prior where right. it was Rachel or right. Zenyatta. Rachel wins. I think Blame should have won Horse of the Year, the right. year that Zenyatta did, but it was more of a lifetime achievement, sure. sort of. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I look, I love Sincere Italia, though. Yeah. I think, I think, I know a lot of people question distance. I think further is only going to be better for her. Mm-hmm. And they, they cite the Belmont Oaks. I, I can't. No. Nope. You were, no one was going to nope. beat Lady Eli right. that day. So. Right. And um, she ran, she ran really she ran well. Five. She ran fourth. She, she ran fourth in her first race, as in first stakes race. Yeah. She ran, I think she's, she dead I think she's for fourth. really good, and if, if they, you know, Godolphin and Kieran, if they see fit, I, I think she could be a player in the Philly and Merit Turf, I and so. I think she could be a decent number in there, too, mm-hmm. because you're going to have Europeans come over, you're yeah. going to have Stephanie's kit, and you'll have, you know, uh, it was a secret gesture. Right. You know, you'll have, you'll have other names yep. Yep. in there, so um, it'll be interesting to see, but yeah. That's, All right. That's where well, I'll go. Let's play one more game before we wrap before we wrap for, for a Wednesday. We're going to call it. Turf or dirt? Turf or dirt, fire Turf away. or dirt. we got three horses, one of whom ran this weekend as well. Lee. Lee. In the Woodbine Mile, finished second. He did. Behind Mon- 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 Mondelist. Mondelist. So, for Lee, turf or dirt? We're talking strictly Breeders' Cup? I'm t- we're talking his future. Or where do you go next if you if you control the destiny of Lee? Why? Well, and in and, and Breeders' <laughs> Cup. I guess is probably the most... Breeders' Cup, the mile. The, the turf mile. Turf mile. The mile. Interesting. Yeah, because I, I think at this point, it was more or less, you had brought it up yesterday when I came into the office, saying that I think my, this is more or less a sign or a, a you know, waving the white flag mm-hmm. saying, you probably We're can't, not going to beat Honor Code. We can't run. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can beat one. We can't beat right. three or four of them. <laughs> right. uh, plus Pharaoh. Plus right, the exactly. Older, plus. The turf... You look at it at a mile, you go, I got to run against, obviously, off of a, you know, nearly a year layoff, a 10-month layoff. I've got to run against a couple of European imports who are okay. They're not superstars, Mm -hmm. though. And let's not forget, Lee was a good turf horse before he turned into a good dirt horse. Right, of course. So, I think for for the Breeders' Cup, if they were so inclined, you go that direction. If they're future... Mm -hmm. I think that's the beauty of this, where if they continue on with him, now keep in mind, he's a seven-year-old. Mm-hmm. It's not like he's a spring chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, he's had some issues. Though. He's had some physical issues. Yeah. I think you can go. You can do whatever you want with him. Right. You want to run the turf, dirt, right. Uh, right. whatever. He can be one of those that right. can do a bit of anything. Right. But he gives you options. He gives you options. The uh, and, and you're absolutely right. I think Mott realized. Look, we're not beating the top dirt horses. So let's see what he can do on turf. But the thing is that that one that beat him, Mondelist, I'm assuming is uh, going. I would imagine going to go to the mile. Right. And. Of the two, I don't know if you've watched the race. Oh yeah, he, he I thought he was much more impressive than Lee. Perhaps yeah. maybe, you know maybe could Lee, could move forward. You know, I, st- I think obviously we're in the best race. Yeah, and and, and obviously he's going to be a lot tighter next out. The fact that you went that fast over yielding ground, right? right. I mean, if if right. he stays sound and they go on, which right. I mean, of the three, I would want obviously. Depending upon whether or not there's other pace, but sure, I, I see. I take your point. Because I th- going 46 over yielding. I mean, you could make the case that that's 
44 <laughs> right. on firm. Right. I mean, you know, and yeah. no one can go that fast. Right. Going a mile, anyway. And, and unless it's a Bobby's yeah. kitten. Right. You know, a, who still apparently is a bit of a nutca- nutcase. Um, yeah. Uh, <coughs> next. I, I, well, before we go next, I, I'll say my, my vote would be Dirt Mile for Lee. Okay. Dirt Mile for Lee. I mean, think about it. Who shows up for the Dirt Mile? I, I think a peeling it, it, tail is going to be very difficult in there. But, you know, if Lee runs his race, he's as good as any, you know. And I still have, I have the ultimate sort of, and this is going to be, if anyone's listened to the podcast before, when, when I was on before, if he's sound, which there's still an unknown, I would put Byron in there in a heartbeat. Yeah. And say, right. drop the hammer, sure. go as fast well, as you can for as long as you can. It was very, 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 very interesting to me that they came out and said that Byron will be retired at the end of the season. Hmm? They didn't say that Byron will be retired now. He can't they win the classic. At the end, no. I I would agree. Hey, this is a horse who well documented. I'm not right. a big not a big fan. Right. right. You go to that mile. Right. And you just yeah. you go. Right. You try and burn them. Right. You try and run them off their feet. Mm-hmm. You try and golden sense the mm-hmm. field. Yeah. Absolutely. Why not? Absolutely. All right. Horse number two. We talked about this one on the prod- podcast uh, quite a bit. Prospect Park. After that last performance. Right where he was what one to ten. He was well, yeah. And finished third. Yeah. Bridge uh, jumpers were safe, at least. Uh, you need to, I think you need to reassess and see what you actually think you have. Um, if it were me, he, he, I think he should have run in the Travers. Mm-hmm. After his first win on the turf, I thought he should have gone back to the dirt. Or at least the Pennsylvania Derby if you want to duck the big horse. It's a million dollars. Right. The turf is always going to be there. Right. I don't think you've run a turf, you know. <clears throat> it's a situation where... You know, you're not always going to have these asinine pr- uh, purses right. for restricted races <laughs> right. on right. dirt. Right. Like, guess right. what? Right. Once you get through the three-year-old restricted, you're going with open company. Or even the Super Derby. For, yeah. I mean, I mean look, you, you tell me he couldn't have won that field. Yeah. Right. <coughs> right. Right. <coughs> so, I apologize for the coughing. Yeah. Listening or watching, but, Holding it against you. Um, uh, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I still don't know what we, what we have. I think you got to figure out dirt. now, though. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Because, because you know, let's because they got to decide for next year. From a pedigree standpoint, you know, he, he might have some appeal at at, at stud. Uh, do they race him at four? I would think that they do because Probably. they don't really have. The I mean, dirt he doesn't have a stakes win. Yeah, you you got to get a little bit more as far mm-hmm. as the accolades are concerned right. before you go and stand him somewhere. Especially, I, I would imagine they want to keep him in California. But, Probably, um, but you know, I mean, they. they it's sh- a shame where you know, like the <clears throat> I don't even know what they call it now. Used to be the. Strube. Oh, right. Yeah. That was a four-year-old restricted sure. two-turn race in right. dirt. Like, First week of the year. <coughs> maybe that would be a, a spot where you would point. But, um, yeah, I, I just think that, you know, and maybe that's why they kept him on the turf. Because they thought that maybe something like that was going to happen to him in that grass race where he just, let's call it for what, it wasn't very good. He was yeah, okay. He right. wasn't very good. But, right. um, yeah, I would have definitely, I would have gone Travers. But, like you say, you could have easily done Pennsylvania Derby. I mean, I. We're running out of, like you said earlier, we're running out of those three-year-old races mm-hmm. only. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. that's what right. I'm doing. Oh, yeah, one more. Divining Rod. Um, well, I would go to the turf, and even then, I, I think at this point you got to question ability, you know, how much is there really. Right. Um, and if that's the case, I mean, there's no reason he can't be a nice listed stakes type. I just don't, I don't think he's a graded stakes caliber horse on turf or dirt at this point well see i don't know I, uh, for me the jury is out i think you're right on on dirt we, we've seen that and certainly the what was it fourth or fifth place finish um last out i can't even remember the name of the race but it was a uh, uh, he i think the bridge there was a bridge jumper and that bridge jumper was not safe because yeah. he didn't hit the board yeah. um and he certainly should have against that field i think that's where you need to say okay look this is a horse that's bred up and down for turf can be a monster on the turf, and we've talked about it on the podcast. Our best horses here generally run on the dirt. If we've, you've got a really good horse or a horse that is competitive in graded stakes on the dirt and can run at least that well on the turf, he should be head and shoulders above 
you know, I mean, Finnegan's Wake and, you know, some of those older turf males. Mm. Not not talking about the Euros, mind you. But no, just, but even then, I, 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 just, I don't. I don't know that he's that. I don't know that he's that good. Maybe I don't know, but just from a pedigree standpoint. <coughs> from a pedigree standpoint, yeah, he it has. seems like he could improve, or at least, you know, this is this is a horse that's that's running against the best of his generation on dirt. Not really, though. That's that's my only thing. I mean, he's as much as I like Mr. Z. Mr. Z's not the well, best of his generation. I'm, I'm thinking of Pharaoh. When? In the Preakness. I mean, yeah, but I mean, he be he. He tried to win that race. I mean, he, he tried could, to he win, but there's a, there's a lot of things in that spot though. Like I can't, I can't give him. After seeing what he's done subsequently, yeah, I, sure. I, I can't say. I mean, there's and you have to factor in the water. I yeah. mean, it, it downpoured, and maybe he just freaked in a wet track. Mm. I I just I, I wonder. I mean, his best race to date has been what the the Lexington. I mean. Mm. Yeah, you beat maybe. Fame and Power. You beat Donworth. Right. I, I I think he should go to the turf, and maybe he wakes up. I, I just don't know how good he is. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. my own. That's my thing. Fair. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe he can prove it on the turf. It's just I don't think, you know, that was the logic with the Prospect Park move to the turf. Right. Where well, you know, you are so much better, but you got to keep in mind that was against restricted three-year-old company. Yes, and the difference is Prospect Park is not necessarily bred up bred and down for, for the turf. Right, and that's know. the thing. Look, I, I think he could be a nice turf horse. Yeah, I just don't think we're looking at a... But guess what? The Pizza Man won the Arlington Million, so anything can happen. <laughs> right. Anything can right. happen. Um, yeah, I, I just... You know, I would run him on the turf. I don't know where he stacks up. Yeah, well, of course. Fair you point. Know. Yeah, he's got to prove it for sure. Got to prove it, but I think the turf would be the way to go, not yeah. the dirt. Yeah. Get him off the dirt. Right. This is already a horse too. Keep in mind, he had the bar shoe. He's got bad feet to begin with. And he only had the bar shoe for a couple races, I think. Well, but still, yeah. I mean, the fact that it's at least there. Sure. You know, I would rather well, at this. Pharaoh point, is, runs with that whatever. Well, plate shoe thing. Pharaoh has won a triple crown. <laughs> <laughs> Divine Rod well, is not. Of course, but I'm just saying. I know you're saying. You know, I know. It's a I, foot I, issues. I um, all right, so this was good. Good to kind of shake the rust up. off. Yes, great catching up with you. back in the swing of things. Um, we may or may not have Pete on Friday. Uh, I would, I would lean towards no. no. That's uh, fine. Maybe we'll we'll get a, a third, you know, just to kind of bounce off. I don't know if you listened to last week's podcast. Loved the podcast we did with Bob Nastanovich. Okay. I don't know if you've met Bob or talked I'm to not, Bob. I'm not. I had, um, uh, I, and I did not listen. I was, I was at the Cape. That's okay. Is it that's fine. You, you you are given a pass. You've been you've been you've had a busy summer. Uh, Bob Bob's been good. We've had a lot of good guests. We've had uh, Scott Carson on. We've had Eric Wing. We've had Lonnie Goldfeder. We've had Chris Larmy, Jonathan Kinchin. I mean, it was a star-studded summer. Star-studded star summer. Star-studded summer. Sitting in for Matt Bernier. Three S's. Uh, that's good. And uh, maybe maybe we do try and rope Lonnie or somebody in. Rope someone. Because Saturday, uh, DRF Live. Four o'clock, it'll be Lonnie Goldfeder and myself. All right. The two of us bringing it home like on Saturday it. for the Pennsylvania like Derby and the Cotillion and all the other good stuff going on. So uh, we'll be back on Friday. We'll it, talk about whatever. The last thing I'll say, but it's a shame Byron's not running in the Byron Stakes. I, I you know, I, I, said it to, I said it to Ilman when we were on, on live. I, I'm not going to say it again. Uh, come on. It's a joke. That's a joke. It is a joke. But has there ever been a horse that has run in and won his estate named for him? No. That'd be pretty funny in the PPs. That would be fun. Byron wins the Byron. That would be. I mean, I would like that. <laughs> that would at least make me chuckle. But I mean, and we know he likes the track. I mean, whatever. It's obviously it's silly, it's stunning. But. And we've gone on too it's far stunning. too long. But too long. Yeah. Uh, Friday, we'll be back. We'll go over. Oh, you're gonna have to refresh me and tell me what we actually do on Friday. So. Uh, we're just, we just look ahead at races. And right. we, That's fine. We, we talk we'll about other things. Up. We didn't even talk about uh, some of the other news, like you know the retirement of Wise Dan. You know, we can get to some. We can of that talk about Friday. that on Friday. Yeah. So. Mike Hogan at the R Formulator. I'm Matt Bernier at Bernier underscore Matt. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Friday.